The little town of Flowerville had very nice weather most of the time, but sometimes at night it could get really windy and make quite a mess. The windy winds didn't usually cause much damage, but when they blew really, really hard, accidents could happen. On a particularly windy night last spring, the winds knocked down the power lines at the train station on Rose Street. That wasn't all, though. There were some really, really strange things that happened that night that you won't believe until you see them for yourself. It wasn't until early in the morning that the emergency calls started coming in. It's okay, Squirt. The wind can't hurt you in here. And I'm sure it'll stop blowing pretty soon. I mean, it can't keep this up forever, but can it? He always barks when it's windy. That's because Squirt is afraid of the wind. Well, I still think that's silly. Come on, Squirt. Don't be a scaredy cat. Nothing's gonna happen to you inside the firehouse. <gasps> what in the blazes was that? I think he's trying to tell us something. Don't you, Tip? I think he wants to go out. Someone give him a biscuit. Squirt, be quiet, noisy dog. Something has him very excited. Maybe we should let him out and follow him. Without warning, Chief McSpeed appeared in the firehouse doorway and quickly told the fire trucks that the lines at the train station had been blown down indeed, and Squirt was trying to warn them about it. Firefighter Bo secured one end of the broken line, while Firefighter Oscar secured the other. The electric company turned off the power, and the emergency was soon over. Everyone was safe, and Squirt was a hero. That wasn't the last of the emergencies that day. The fire trucks and the firefighters were busy all afternoon fixing the messes the windy winds had created. I just got a call from Farmer Noggenbonker. He sounded pretty excited about something. How much you want to bet his cat is up the tree again? He should tie up that cat. Silly, you don't tie up a cat. You tie up a dog. Well, who made up that rule? I don't know, but imagine trying to go for a walk with a cat on the end of a leash. I can imagine all kinds of things. Cats on a leash, birds wearing hats, dogs reading books. Across town at Farmer Noggenbacher's flower farm, the winds had caused another problem, and the old farmer was quite puzzled by it. He was staring at the big tree in front of his house and talking to himself. I'll tell you, it was the strongest, most windy wind I ever did see. Or hear, it was loud, too. I had a sound like a train racing past. Just then, Commander and Pete arrived. Uh -huh. 
I told you. Didn't I say? Didn't I tell you? It's the cat. Come down out of that tree, you silly cat. Commander, you're only partly right. What do you mean? But look up and you'll see. It seemed that Farmer Nagenbacher's favorite cow, Clara, had been blown right up the big tree and was stuck there. Moo. Moo moo. I never imagined a cow in a tree. It was a really, really strong wind. We're going to need help to get that cow down. Moo. Commander got on his radio and called for help. Blakey soon arrived and carefully hoisted her long ladder high above the trapped cow. Clara was very scared, but she trusted the firefighters and fire trucks, and they soon had her safely on the ground again. Ooh. Rescuing a cow from a tree is an odd thing to do. I could imagine a sheep or a goat or even a mouse, but not in a tree. Better a house. A cow up a tree? That seems silly to me. <laughs> me too. Moo moo. Moo? Do you think that means anything? It means thank you in cow talk. Well, you're welcome, Mrs. Cow. Now that Clara was safe on the ground where she belonged, the fire trucks headed back to the firehouse to get some very needed rest after a long, busy day. Before I forget, I have an apology to make to Squirt. So do I. We thought you were a scaredy cat and afraid of the wind. But you were really just trying to warn us about the electrical wires. <laughs> Squirt, you are the bravest firehouse Dalmatian in the world. And our very best friend, too. So never, never stop barking. <laughs> Unless you start talking. That was good. Thank you. Today was the day that Lakey the Ladder Engine got to try out her new siren, and she was very happy about it. We need loud sirens so people can hear us fire trucks from front to rear. We travel so quick and get there so fast. I race on ahead. I'm never the last. We hoist up our... <gasps> Holy 
McGill and Cunny. We'd better go and check it out in case there's a fire. Hey, you guys in there, let's call for help. I wonder where Lakey is, Pete. She should have been back by now. Tip, I wouldn't worry about Lakey. She's off having fun and making lots of noise with her new siren. I don't think so, Pete. I haven't heard her siren for a long time. That was Lakey who sent in the alarm. Something fell from the sky and started a fire in Farmer Noggenbunker's field. Let's get going. time ago, it was me who saw something that fell from the sky. I knew it then, and can honestly say, it was the greatest, most wonderful day. Wiser started his old engine and slowly headed off in the direction of Farmer Noggenbacher's field. Chief McSpeed and Firefighter Oscar hurried over to see the hole in the ground. Any idea what fell from the sky, Lakey? No, Commander. When I got here, all that was left was a smoldering hole in the ground. Well, here's something interesting. Come and look at this, everyone. If you look carefully at the ground, you can see some marks, like something was being dragged away from here. That was probably made by Farmer Noggenbonker pulling something behind his tractor. I mean, what else could it be? At that very moment, Wiser arrived on the scene. I came as fast as I could. What did you find? Just this hole, Wiser, and some marks in the ground. Hearing the sirens in his field, Farmer Noggenbonker drove up on his tractor to see what was happening. Maybe people won't believe me when I tell them some of the things I see out here plowing the fields. My, my, my. This can mean only one thing. They've come back. Would you please explain to me what you are talking about? What was that? Don't make any noise. Whoever it is almost started a fire. In the name of the Flowerville Fire Department, I command you to come out of there right now and show yourselves. To everyone's surprise, a pair of tiny little aliens emerged from the woods, pulling an even tinier flying saucer behind them. and raspberries are they i mean are those am i seeing things don't scare them commander scare them i'm the one who should be scared they're the ones from another planet now wait a second the little aliens moved toward Lakey, floating just above the ground. Excuse me, I don't want to be rude, but you could have started a fire, you know? Oh, diddy bye bye. Do you think they understood? I don't believe they would ever do anything to harm us. They must have crashed. It must have been an accident. Out of the blue, another little flying saucer came in for a landing, right in the middle of Farmer Noggenbacher's field. 
I'm dreaming, aren't I? Oh boy, I think we need more help. Just relax and stay calm. Two more tiny aliens appeared from their flying saucer and spoke. I sure wish I could understand what they were saying. What are they doing here? Have you seen these things before? Don't call them things. You might hurt their feelings. Let me not eat fruit fruit. Um, Dobby Dobby. I'm going to have to report this. Dobby Dobby. What does that mean? Suddenly, both of the tiny flying saucers lifted off into the blue sky, and all four of the aliens disappeared into the woods without saying a word. First time I ever saw one of them up close like that. They are usually very shy and don't like to be seen. They seem very friendly. Now, let me get this right, Farmer Noggenbonker. Are you saying you have actually seen these little tykes before? I sure have. Lots of times. I just hope they realize how dangerous it is for them to land like that. They could cause a fire. We need a plan. We have to do something. Quiet! They're back! This time, the four little aliens came out of the woods, and they were carrying something on their heads. Oh, look! They've collected some flowers! Wow, the new Billy! Billy, Billy! Probably they don't have flowers where they live. Lavender Dilly Dilly. Dilly Dilly. The four aliens' tummies lit up brightly and a strange sound filled the air. Soon after, a pair of flying saucers appeared overhead and landed safely in the field. is going to believe us. Sure they will, Commander. Everyone loves flowers. They're the most beautiful things on Earth. That's what I would want if I came here from somewhere else. The last of the aliens climbed into the flying saucer, and then they flew away into the sky. What do you think they do with the flowers? Maybe they eat them. Or smell them. And do you think they'll ever come back? I think as long as we have beautiful flowers, anything is possible. Zippy, nerdy, boo boo. Tom, dobby, dobby. Lavender, dilly.